I think that one of the, one of the significant cultural um, shifts um, in our, uh, your generation, and I witnessed it and it was happening in mine, is that I think people are less and less impressed by the integrity or even the honesty of institutions as such. They recognize that we need them, um, uh, but they are flawed and fallible. Um, and the law of institutions is that they end up existing for their own sake. And I think that what's happened to a lot of spiritual institutions like churches and faiths, they all started because of some figure of genius who, who caught a vision of a better life or an understanding of God or um, social good, um, compassion. And um, the second generation come along and in order to keep that vision, that idea, alive in history, you need a vehicle that will carry it. You need an institution. It's what the, the German sociologist Weber called the routinization of charisma. It's a horrible phrase, but it's a very helpful phrase. A charisma is, is the gift, the great given thing that the genius brings, the spiritual genius, the artistic genius, the political genius, whatever it is. It needs a routine if it's not to die with the, with, the, with the person who brought it to birth. And so you develop institutions, you develop churches, political parties, um, a school of art, a school of music, um, a way of understanding uh, the universe. Um, and it, it's meant to carry the gift, the vision, the given thing, the beautiful thing. But as it moves further into history, it tends to be uh, run by, there are people who are good at running institutions, good at running processes, but they very often lose sight of the purpose that the institution is meant to run. The church, which, which was meant to represent forgiveness and compassion um, and the kindliness of God uh, and God's insane love for losers, um, ends up being an institution that exists for its own sake. It becomes a power structure. Um, uh, the men in the long black clothes get in charge and of course power structures on the whole tend to run things for themselves and there are always victims of power structures. Women know that well because most power structures were run for and by men until within living memory. The good things that those spiritual institutions have carried, the real values of spirituality, of poetry, of metaphor, of understanding that life is more than getting and spending, it's more than biology. There is something about us humans. We thirst um, for something that we call soul. Um, we have more needs than simply the material. Um, that instinct, that gift has now been liberated from the big institutions that claim to own it and to govern it and to be able to impart it and only their version. Um, and I think that what I would say to people today uh, with, a, with a spiritual thirst is read what's available. Um, read poetry, listen to music, walk the hills, go to church. There are churches that don't abuse you, that don't bully you spiritually and theologically, that give you space um, uh, to doubt and to think and to be challenged and to have a broken heart uh, and to, to, to um, wonder whether your life means anything, whether it can mean anything, especially in your defeats and failures, because those are the things that really kill us, the, the, the feeling that we're maybe not a good person, that a marriage has broken down, a relationship has ended, we screwed up that particular piece of work. These things cost us, um, and you can find institutions that will embody and enable a kind of self-love, a kind of forgiveness. Um, just don't buy into the institutional fascism of a lot of these, um, in, uh, the, the, these, um, these institutional realities. Sit lightly to them. More and more the clergy are sitting lightly, I think. Um, they use the language, they use um, the language of, of official truth, but how can there be an official packaged truth about such transcendental uncertainties? There can't be. Um, but the great thing about churches like this one here that I still come to, I'm a doubting person. Um, I don't know whether there's a God, uh, but I know I have spiritual and emotional needs. Um, and this place, I love this place because it speaks to me of the other. It speaks to me of kindness, of forgiveness, of grace. Um, and there are places like that.